wanted to do a complete review of the Paul C. Buff Digi-B. Um, I didn't want to do the review until I'd uh, had uh, several hours, not testing hours, which I've got many of those, but actual hours of use, and five is enough. Um, by the way, don't forget to enter the contest. I'm giving away this red DigiB DB400 in a photo contest. Um, so far, there have not been an enormous amount of entries, and uh, so your chances, you know, you've got a lot better odds than some of the, uh, the prior ones. And uh, anyway, so you got five more days to uh, enter the photo contest for this one. But on to the review of the Digibee. Um, look, at, I've got two of the ABR800s behind me and uh, four of the Pulse Buff of their professional Einstein 640 units, which are 640 watt seconds output. Uh, owned a White Lightning and uh, even plan on getting another one. Um, the DB400. I've uh, done two shoots with this. One was a business shoot uh, in front of a building showing you the interesting light mod using the carbon fiber monopod that I showed you for attaching this since this unit is only two and a half pounds which is amazingly lightweight. But it's no less durable than the Einstein unit behind me. Let's go on to some specifics and let's get down to things. This particular unit is um, the 160 watt seconds, 2.5 watt seconds, 160 watt second to DB400. The one above this, um, the DB800, which is 320 watt seconds of output for, I believe, $60 more. Check the links below for purchasing either one of these units. This one is $310. Um, currently, the faceplate is no different. Uh, the uh, actual uh, mounting rings are no different uh, between this unit and the Einstein unit. You can't say that, oh, well, the alien bees, and you hear this all the time. There are some additional features on the Einstein for, like, doing uh, high-speed flash photography for, like, freeze motion of, like, saying, dropping something in the water and actually seeing the water droplets um, in action mode on uh, the Einstein, and uh, obviously that is a 640 watt second unit. Uh, well, that's all well and fine. It also does, it's also not the size, and it's not two and a half pounds. And this is no less of a uh, you know an inferior unit in any way, shape, or form. Because a lot of people will ask me as far as well, what about the construction unit? I mean, it's really small. It's no less of the Alien Bees and no less of the Einstein unit as far as mounting a softbox on this, or any of uh, the uh, reflector mods or the uh, Octobox. I mean, I could easily mount the 47-inch uh, Pulse Buff. Octobox on it behind me, which is currently mounted on the Einstein, is, uh, would uh, mount on uh, the Digibee. So, as so far as the durability of the mount, the actual uh, housing of the mount, or the actual uh, quad fingers that hold in the light mod, no less of a durable unit. But what about the simplicity of it? The one thing that I particularly like on, like on this particular unit before talking about the simplicity is that I already have these modules, the Cyber Commander, and you don't have to have a Cyber Commander. You use a simple triggering unit, but that do, does mean that you need to go to the back of the unit to adjust the power output and the modeling light output, along with the uh, CyberSync uh, receiver units that work and fit on the Pulse Buff Einstein unit also work are the exact same modules that fit on the Digibee here. But with the Cyber Commander and this unit, I don't once I turn the power on, I don't have to touch it again. So it has 100% of the same level of ease of use and professionalism as the uh, the Pulse Buff Einstein unit, but it's in a lot smaller package. It is a lot simpler and easier to use and better and more so still than the Pulse Buff Einstein is the fact that I have a 400 watt equivalent uh, 500 Kelvin daylight balanced LED uh, illumination bulb and uh, for close in work and indoor you know it is the case that not at high ISO there's more than enough output from the LED cool running as I was showing you in an earlier video and keeping my hand you know an inch away from the unit it wasn't even basically wasn't even warm I have cool running, long lived um, LED bright daylight balanced illumination out of this unit. And so that's something that even the Einstein unit doesn't have. Simplicity of design, it's very elegant. I made a complete video as so far as how to use uh, the Digibee. It's very, very simple. This is my own little light mod where I actually attach via industrial Velcro. I do this to uh, all my studio strobes that lets me mount a, an additional receiver unit uh, from my Sekonic professional light meter that lets me meter 
at the source of the subject in addition to using the cyber commander which duly uh, inputs uh, the adjustment of uh, power and modeling illumination through here so I'm actually testing um, uh, triggering uh, from my Seconic light meter here and I'm actually uh, adjusting the power output and the modeling output to here through my cyber commander or the simple unit that you can buy which is the uh, the commander unit which I believe is $59 on a pulsey buff, I'm sorry, I couldn't remember the exact price. It's like fifty-nine or sixty dollars. Um, this unit is made in America, right here in Nashville, Tennessee, and that is also pretty rare. And uh, I'll actually be one of the first people. While I live and born in America, I'll be one of the first people to say that I am not very fond of American-made products of the past forty years. But this is a complete exception. <laughs> complete exception not only because of how well it's made its simplicity I mean you know the Germans or the Jap I mean I don't know if this is an obtuse comment but I'm actually extremely impressed and additionally so impressed uh, by the uh, the level of customer service and warranty provided by Paul C. Buff as far as an end user doing something stupid uh, you know dropping it or you know something that's unrelated to the design and construction of the, unit. the level of service that they have is you know, it it's it's well known. Anybody that owns a policy buff knows about their customer service. Uh, uh, if you know about that, and you can find plenty of information online about that, there's no reason for me to go into it. But let's just call it exceptional. And that's not my opinion. That's actually general consensus. So I have that, which I can't see with the Digibee, which is the excellent customer service of the Pulsey Buff uh, company uh, in Nashville, Tennessee. And the wonderful folks, when I talk there and order stuff, I'm not connected to Pulsey Buff. And, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I don't know if they sponsor anybody, but, uh, you know, I loan a lot of their products, and uh, I highly recommend them because they are that great. Um, the Digibee, uh, the five hours, I've actually, maybe I've got about 15 hours of playing with a unit and, uh, you know, learning its ins and outs, which did not take that very long, but also testing it. Also, by the way, uh, while uh, the Paul C. Buff units are not uh, high-speed uh, sync compatible for uh, most photography, I was using the Digibee indoors with uh, my Fujifilm, for example, at one four thousandth of a second. So if you have a leaf shutter camera, one of the Fuji leaf shutters, by the way, just as a side note, the Digibee as well as the Einstein units and the Alien Bs will high-speed sync at one four thousandth of a second, not on regular focal plane shutters, which depends on the actual uh, camera you're using, whether that's one and a quarter or one fiftieth or two fiftieth or one hundred and eightieth of a second. But I just thought I'd drop that in there. That's a wonderful fact that I can actually use my Fujifilm with this unit at high-speed sync because it is a leaf shutter unit. Um, on the instructional video that I made, it is extremely simple. And the only user replaceable part on this is the Xenon tube, but you're going to have to put in a lot of hours of uh, strobing this particular tube before you're going to end up replacing it. Replacement to uh, Xenon tube or flash tube is not that much. Very lightweight at seven and a, I mean, excuse me, seven. <laughs> at two and a half, I said seven. At had too much caffeine today. At two and a half pounds. Uh, the fact that remarkably and wonderfully I'm able to turn on the slave unit you're able to if at the time you purchase this unit um, you know you don't have the money to purchase the cyber commander or the cyber sync receiver you are able just to use a pop-up flash or use this as a slave unit just by pressing the slave mode and using the frosted dome here which will trip this uh, studio strobe uh, to illuminate your composition uh, so that's wonderful now um, I wanted to make a note about another user. I don't want to mention her name since I didn't ask her permission, but she doesn't seem to mind. I talk to her all the time. She bought an Alien Bee not too long ago, and she has not been into photography that long. Obviously, no gear makes pictures. It is the photographer, the photographer's eye, that makes the gear. But it is also true that you're not going to do 100 miles an hour down the freeway in an old beat-up Yugo. So gear does account for something. And when it comes to studio strobe, the color saturation and the, the light mods and the things that you can do with a studio strobe that you cannot do. And listen, I have at least, I know I've got right at about 30 speed lights. This is a $550 SB910 speed light. This, by the way, is about 20 times more complicated than this Digibee, okay? Let's see, $310 for this, and it has near infinite versatility. I know there are tons and tons of speed light mods. I've made videos about tons and tons of speed light. 
550 bucks. Yeah, I know you can get a cheap young new flash for about 80 bucks. Well, isn't that wonderful? Um, not that much power. They're not that long lived. Let's just talk about a professional speed light versus a professional studio strobe. $310, $550. I need basically four of these to match the Digibee. Okay, well, isn't that nice? I can build all sorts of mods for this. The reflectors, the soft bot, the octoboxes, what the versatility of what you could use this for. Uh, this lady in particular, that, that uh, I guess she's a friend of mine. I guess I can call her a friend. And uh, she bought an Alien B uh, several months ago. And she's so happy. She's taking pictures of uh, her children and all sorts of various things. And people are just loving the hell out of her pictures. And uh, she is really, really enjoyed uh, her uh, her pulsy buff uh, studio strobe that she bought and uh, you know I don't know if it, it's sometimes people fear it's like well it's a professional studio strobe that they think that well maybe I don't have a use for that maybe I just do street photography or maybe I'm just an ambient light shooter and well that's perfectly fine but what you can do like I said there are hundreds of books out there written about the million different ways you can create some of the most amazing photographs imaginable. And there's a lot of things you can get away with with a speed light. This is undeniable. But what you can do, and this is irrefutable by anybody, is that they don't have to be a professional photographer in the business full time to enjoy and reap the benefits. In other words, what I'm saying is that a lot of people have in their brains this notion that, you know, oh, there's the world of amateur photography and what I enjoy as a hobby and professional photography, and these are the people that has professional studio strobes and light meters. And that, it's not really the case. There is no line there. I mean, it's about creating the perfect picture. It's about getting great uh, color saturation. And then you're talking about like a $10 light stand over here. Pop a $10 light stand at the base of your Digibee. You know, get a soft box, even if it's a cheap soft box, and buying yourself a $20 reflector, you know, the whole world of photography opens up to you on a level that does not exist. You know, I said I've got 30 speed lights. You know, all the speed lights in the world are not going to match what I can do simply and elegantly and beautifully with some serious light from a studio strobe. Also, as far as this, when your studio strobe kicks the bucket, it's kicked the bucket, okay? On, I mean, excuse me. <laughs> when your speed light kicks the bucket, that's what I meant to say, it kicks the bucket. When your studio strobe, you know, burns out a flash tube, like, you know, a quarter million shots down the line, which is, that's quite a lot of shots. I mean, you literally pop this xenon tube out and you pop in another unit. Um, as long as you don't radically mistreat this unit or roll it down the hill or your dog doesn't... Uh, you know, go after it in one way or you know, it's going to last you a very, very, very long time. A lot longer than this speed light, which, by the way, costs $250 more than this Digibee does. And back to the review. Um, I found absolutely nothing lacking on the Digibee. Um, I've gone over the Digibee forwards and backwards and backwards and forwards again and again and again. I used it remotely with my Mini Vagabond uh, Lithium Power Pack and I've been uh, testing it. And I'm very happy with the fact that it does high speed sync photography with my Leaf Shutter uh, Fuji X100T. But I mean, this unit is very, very simple. It has all the elegance of a trimmed down Alien Bees. But it has no less, any less durability than the Pulsy Buff Einstein unit, which people say, well, that's Einstein's professional studio strobe. So it is no less durable than that, but it also has 100% of the capability for wireless uh, transceiving with the Cyber Commander and this receiver unit as the Einstein unit, but in addition to the Paul C. Buff Einstein unit, which this has and the Einstein does not have, is the fact that not using the strobe at all, uh, especially entry-level photographers, you could use this as WYSIWYG indoor illumination or close proximity illumination or low light illumination by using only the LED high power illumination 400 watt equivalent daylight balanced uh, illumination from this unit where you're actually seeing the type of specular diffuse and mid-tone uh, composition with the light from this unit you know even if you're using an Icon DSLR people talk about mirrorless cameras and how they're WYSIWYG what you see is what you get it'll actually show you the exposure and sort of lighting well even if you're using a Canon or an Icon DSLR 
which does not give you that wissy wig uh, view, obviously so, since it's using a reflex mirror. If you're an entry-level photographer, you can get dip your feet in at the very easy level, yet still have professional illumination at decent proximity, say 20 feet or left or less, depending on the amount of ambient lighting that you have, by simply using the modeling light only, which has, you know, I showed you in a prior video that it's quite substantial illumination. And so that's a real big boon. And you could work your way into stroboscopic work. Um, so another way of looking at it, and people don't consider that, while this unit is perfectly fine also strictly as a video illumination, uh, just from the LED only, or using the LED illumination um, for uh, close proximity photography, it is also a foothold step which allows someone that is not so familiar with external illumination to judge the exposure and the output of the composition of their picture before they press the shutter because you do have that that actual view as opposed to a strobe but you're never going to see what it is until you hit the back of the play button on your camera you're going to see immediately what the lighting is going to be before you actually hit the shutter button so that's a huge advantage for amateur photographers with this LED lamp illumination, which the other alien bees in the Paul C. Buff Einstein unit do not have. And this is for a lot less money. So that's something to consider. This unit, like I said, in summation, no less durable. Um, uh, the same uh, Paul C. Buff warranty stands behind this unit. It has all the advanced input uh, that I want that exists also on the Einstein and dual input. So I'm able to use my Siconic meter to actually flash this unit. Via the sync port, I have dual inputs at the same time for adjusting power and modeling lamp and illumination or using my Siconic meter at the sync port. And uh, there's been nothing lacking on this. And it actually takes a lot to impress me. I'm one of those people that's not easily impressed. But I was actually a lot more impressed with this unit than I thought it would be. I mean, I looked at the unit and was like, well, I understand the LED. That's going to be a real gain. And the fact that it has Einstein inputs. But um, the light mods that I've uh, developed for this and the fact that it's only two and a half pounds and I can stick it on the end of a monopod, which, you know, normally that's what you'd see uh, at the very most with a speed light. But I could stick some serious power at the end of a one pound carbon fiber monopod with this unit, which is how I used it uh, two days ago. Um, so my review is a 10 out of 10 on the DigiB for many, many reasons. There's no, nothing lacking in durability, build quality, simplicity of use, um, the advanced inputs of the Einstein unit, and the fact that you have a lot of advantages with the LED illumination, and that is a boon advantage for someone that is trying to get into advanced lighting work. Someone is taking the step from amateur photography and trying to learn more about expanding the horizons of illumination, because photography is all about the light. You can have the best lenses in the world. If you don't have enough color saturation to the sensor, you know, all those beautiful images from the professional, it's lighting, 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 lighting. As I mentioned in another video, when you actually have a, uh, a photo uh, convention, a photography convention, you got all the noobs heading over to look at the cameras and lenses, and you have all the professionals that are going over to wear like the soft boxes and the studio strobes, because that is what, uh, you know, turns the, uh, turns the key on their chain, shall we say. They're just, you know... They love looking, because it is about the lighting, you know. You can get a whole lot more out of a crummy lens and an awesome piece of lighting than you can out of the best lens in the world and, and, cr and cruddy lighting. I mean, that, that's undeniable. It's not my opinion. It's just flat out undeniable. So that's my long-winded blah, blah, blah review on the Pulsey Buff uh, DigiB. DB400 and the DB800 is the exact same unit except higher output at 320 watt seconds. And uh, that's it. If the Paul C. Buff folks uh, see this video, uh, then I say hey to them. Hey, what's up, Nashville? Uh, <laughs> I'm not that far away from them. I'd love to visit them. I don't know if they'd want, want me to visit them. He'd be like, oh, my God, there's that guy on the videos. Uh, they're not that far away. <laughs> they're only like about four-hour drive away from me. But uh, anyway. I digress. So don't forget to enter the contest because I'm giving away another unit exactly like this except in red and you have five days left on uh, 
the contest entries. Thank you for watching so much, and check the links below for purchase of a Digibee. Okay?